Hello, today I want to talk to you about rollers and about the tools to use for taking an impression, for rubbing the back of the paper when you're taking a print by hand without a printing press. So to talk about rollers first, I have already um, done a video describing rollers quite uh, in quite a lot of detail and that's in the self-isolation series on YouTube or if you're watching through social media it's the Lino with Laura series the first series so you'll find an episode on rollers there that's quite comprehensive but just a little recap in case um, you you haven't seen that so I've got some rollers here and they are all different sizes and costs and um, I just wanted to run through them. So this blue handled roller is made by SD and SD make a range of rollers. They make a red handled one and uh, a black handled professional grade. I think they call that one. Um, and I think they're the best of the economy brands for printing rollers. Printing rollers are expensive, uh, or at least they can be expensive. So SD make make these these different types of rollers, and basically the different coloured handles refer to different types. So this red handled roller, which is quite common, you see that one quite a lot. That's a very hard roller, and. The blue handled one is is quite um, a lot softer and there's also this blue handled one which has been sent to me by SD and although it looks the same as that one it's even softer so I'm not sure whether I think this might be a tester one that's that's just got the same blue handled on but these the blue handled ones basically are softer when you are choosing a roller it's really important to have a soft roller for doing lino. When you roll out your ink on your glass plate or your tile or your plastic sheet, whatever you're using, if you have a rock hard roller, it's very hard to get an even layer of ink across the roller. And the temptation is that you, you put more ink onto the roller, you, you have a thicker layer of ink to get it even because a hard roller will sort of skip over the surface, whereas a soft roller will take up a nice fine layer of ink quite easily. So I don't go for the red handled hard roller like that. When I choose a roller, I like a nice soft one. So this blue handle one's very good as an economy roller. The other economy roller that I use is this little wire handled one. Now I use these um, because I quite often do lino cuts where I'm actually using different colours on one layer of printing. So I'll mix up say three or four different colours and I'll have three or four little rollers and I'll actually blend the ink on the lino for printing. And so these little rollers are very useful for that. Now these are hard rollers, but they're so small that you can still use them and get a nice layer of ink across them. If this was longer, if this was the same length as this one, I would say this was too hard. But at this size, you can get away with it. So this is like, I think of these ones as being like, like my little painting rollers. So that's another economy roller. If we go up to more expensive uh, expensive rollers, this one is from Hawthorne Printmaking Supplies. And I should stop here to say that when it comes to where to buy things, if you look on my website, there's a resources section. If you go to the resources section, there's a supplier list there, which lists UK suppliers and some foreign ones and a little bit about each supplier. So Hawthorne make this uh, roller and it's a nice soft roller, which I really like and quite a chunky handle there. And you can see it's quite convenient because it has a prop on it to keep the roller um, above the, the surface, the working surface when you're resting it. And then I've got another one here, and I think I bought this one at um, Intaglio in London. And this is a Japanese rubber roller. Again, it's quite nice and soft. 
um, and I quite like these rubber rollers. Now the thing that the Hawthorn and the, the more expensive the Hawthorn and the uh, Japanese one have in common that is quite useful is that you can take them apart to clean them. Now I wouldn't take them apart every time I clean them after I've printed with them but periodically I take, um, if we look at this one, I would unscrew the ends and take it apart and scrape off the excess ink from the bar of the roller. Because I use a lot of extender in my printing um, and I use um, the inks in quite a sort of dynamic way, I often end up with a lot of spray coming off the roller and onto the bar and periodically that needs scraping back. With these um, rollers, the SD rollers, you can't take them apart. You can clean them and you can scrape those bars, but it's not quite as easy. So um, it's a little bit more of a faff, but then they are so much cheaper that you know you can see why um, they're sealed and then you can't take them apart. So now I've talked about rollers, I want to talk about a couple of sundry things before we move on to things to rub the back of your print with. So let me just move those over here. And rolling out your ink. I'm very lucky. I have an enormous glass plate. In fact, it's an old shower do door that I use to roll out inks on. But when I teach, I'm moving from place to place and I need something light and portable. So this is an inking tray that I bought from a school supplier and I think, um, I can't remember what the shop was, it was an online shop and it's, it's, it's a paint tray for, for children basically. And these are really useful, they're very sturdy, I mean I've had these years. Um, and if you're inking up, if, if the kitchen is your studio and you want to keep things tidy, these little, little trays are great because they have like a ridge around the edge and it keeps all the ink in place. So little plastic trays, very, very good. Um, the other thing that I sometimes use is Perspex Sheet and this was a piece of secondary double glazing which we didn't need anymore so Perspex Sheet like that again if you're moving about the place and you need something that's lightweight and safe to move about then then that works very well um, or you could use a tile anything that's smooth really that you can roll out inks and also a shout out for palette knives. These plastic palette knives, now I think I bought them some time ago from Intaglio, but I'm pretty sure you can get them um, from a lot of suppliers. They cost very little. And this shape, I've, I always have been, you know, sort of traditional palette knife type person. And then I bought some of these to try. And actually I like this shape very much. So I recommend those. And the metal ones, um, I don't find these as useful actually when it comes to manipulating and mixing inks. These big fat ones are easier. So I have a lot of those and yeah, they're very useful, very cheap. So now I want to move on to talking to you about what to use to rob the back of your print. And what I'm showing you here are called barons. These are Japanese printing tools and they're for printing Japanese woodblock, but they also work very effectively for printing lino. And they come in various sorts. If we look at a, let's look at this one first, a traditional barren from Japan. This is bamboo. It's a bamboo leaf and it's twisted over a, uh, in this instance, a car, a piece of cardboard and inside the cardboard there is a plat, traditionally a plat of uh, bamboo in a sort of spiral. Uh, these days it could be rope, it could be nylon, you know, there's various things it could be. 
and they were devised for rubbing the back of Japanese woodblock prints to take the impression. And this is one um, of my uh, sort of everyday barons here. It costs about, I think they cost about £50. Um, it's been covered fairly badly by me. So just to show you, this is the, the bamboo leaf that would cover a barren. We'll go into this a lot more when we go on to the series about Japanese woodblock, but that's a sort of work a day barren for rubbing the back of the print. This is a rather fancier version that I've ordered from uh, a barren maker in Japan, specifically for Japanese woodblock printing. And as you can see, it's been beautifully covered by him. And this tool costs about a hundred pounds, I suppose. Um, and they come in a variety of weights. Now, for general purpose printing on lino cut, you don't have to invest in a very expensive baron because um, a plastic one will work very well. So here is a here is the sort that I used to teach with, and it's basically plastic. It's uh, got a dimpled surface so that it moves over the paper uh, when you rub the back of it. And when I first invested in these for my students, I was sort of a bit, I wasn't sure it was going to work. I didn't like that it was plastic, but actually it's fine. It works an absolute treat. And then there are very, very cheap, and this one is really a very battered old one, very, very cheap versions of Barron's. Um, and this one would cost you, set you back about all of maybe three pounds, something like that. It won't last very long. It's just a piece of cardboard with a bit of bamboo wrapped around it. Um, so this one won't last long, but it will work very nicely. So I just want to show you the different ways of holding them if you are rubbing the back of your print. If you hold them like so by the handle, like that, it's, it's quite hard to use and also it'll cramp your hand. So the way that I always tell people to hold, hold them is to put your fingers through the handle and let your hand drop so that the weight and the strength is coming down through the heel of your hand as you rub. That's a nice, you could, compared to that, this is a really nice stable um, handhold. And also, if you're standing up to print, obviously I can't because we're filming, but if you're standing up to print, then the whole weight of your arm and, and your shoulder is behind it. So it's much easier to put some force into your rubbing uh, and get a nice impression. If, you're, if you've got a dinky one like this, just put your fingers to the handle and drop your hand down. Same rule. So you're holding it as a flat tool to rub with. The other sort of barren um that you can use and this is great if you are if you're printing larger lino cuts or you're working with thicker heavier paper because this is quite a heavy thing this is a ball bearing baron if i shake it maybe you can hear and this has got ball bearings in it now these come in various there are various makes of these this one is actually it's a sealed unit with the ball bearings in it and what happens with them the, the issue with the sealed ones um, is that you can get as you print fluff goes inside them and eventually the balls get um, sort of stuck because the fluff builds up around them a lot of these ball bearing barons you can take apart and you can actually clean out the fluff what we've worked out with this one, uh, after I dropped it on its side, is you can prise it apart, but you're not meant to. So I would never recommend that unless you're absolutely confident you can fix it again um, as a means of cleaning it. So if you are going to invest in one of these and they can cost a lot of money, I would suggest that you invest in one that you can take apart and clean out the fluff periodically to keep it nice and movement going. So we'll look at barons again when we actually are doing the printing. But for now, that just gives you an idea of that tool. Um, spoons, back to basics. 
There are a lot of people that I talk to who print with wooden spoons and use a, a wooden spoon to rub the back of their prints to take the impression. No problem with that at all. What I tend to do is to take most of the impression with the Baron and then I go in with a spoon and um, just use it to put extra pressure in small areas. Um, you can see here, this is a teaching spoon that I, I use, that, that's Ikea. This is a, an old uh, serving spoon, I think. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I've, I've worn off the silver plating there with my rubbing. So I just use a spoon for sort of intense pressure in small areas. Uh, and again, we'll look at that when we come to the actual business of printing. And this last thing I was going to show you is, is a, a funny, uh, it's, it's a bit of wood. I think it's, it's a bit of banister. And again, it's been smoothed off so that you can rub with it. And I show you that because if you talk to 20 people who print by hand, you'll have 20 different ways of rubbing the back of the print and, and everybody has their own preferred tool. Um, Edward Borden, who is historical, uh, he's dead now, printmaker, who's I'm a great fan of his, he, was, he preferred tobacco tins. He rubbed the back of his prints with tobacco tins. So it really doesn't matter what you use to rub the back of your paper as long as it gets the result that you need. So if it's me, I use a combination of a baron and a spoon. But if you want to use a wooden spoon or a funny old bit of wood, it honestly doesn't matter. So that's a quick trot through some tools. And we will see those again when we come to use them in future films. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you'll join me for the next video.